The Russian army, which is experiencing a shortage of personnel, has begun sending servicemen diagnosed with hepatitis C to the front despite the danger of this disease. This became known from a video message from a group of Russian soldiers who claim that their command is forcing them to go to the front lines, ignoring their health problems. According to the servicemen, instead of undergoing a military medical commission, they were sent to a new assault regiment, despite having a dangerous viral disease. We have viral hepatitis, and we are being sent to infect the Russian army, the soldiers said, adding that such orders endanger not only their health, but also that of other servicemen. In one of the messages, one of the soldiers said that in order to draw attention to his condition, he even swallowed razor blades, but was then punished and sent back to the front. Hepatitis C is a serious viral disease that affects the liver and can lead to cirrhosis and liver cancer. The virus is transmitted through blood and poses a threat in case of mass infection in conditions of close contact. The spread of the disease among military personnel can result in serious outbreaks of infection in the army, weakening personnel and creating additional medical and epidemiological risks. Earlier of this year, a Russian soldier from the Moscow's 5th Separate Motorized Rifle Brigade has described how troops in his unit, many suffering from serious illnesses such as tuberculosis and HIV, were thrown into fighting on the front lines and used as cannon fodder. The man accuses his military commanders of pointlessly causing the deaths of their men with their orders. He said that many military personnel who have been called up for duty in the southern military district are serious ill, this includes himself who has HIV. Discord over the war's duration and intensity appears to be growing among Russian soldiers. They discuss ways to give up serving and avoid further deployment to the front line while at home civilians panic about being conscripted. Russian depots with tanks and infantry fighting vehicles should run out in 2027, with artillery in 2026, with multiple launch rocket systems in 2025, and mortar stocks are almost empty. This is the conclusion reached by journalists from Ekonomisheskaya Pravda after analyzing OSINT data and satellite photos and using the linear interpolation method. In addition, according to Pavel Luzin, an expert on Russian military potential at the Washington-based Center for European Policy Analysis, at the current rate of depletion, Russian tanks and infantry vehicles will reach a critical point of depletion before the second half of 2026. Despite numerous statements that Russia has switched to a war footing and spends about 8% of its GDP on defense, the Kremlin can compensate for the loss of tanks, armored vehicles and artillery only by removing from storage and restoring equipment manufactured in Soviet times. However, these reserves do not seem inexhaustible. The publication says, it is also emphasized that not all equipment in Russian warehouses is suitable even for cannibalism for dismantling, for spare parts, to make new weapons. For example, out of 3.4 thousand tanks, only 614 are in satisfactory condition. 1.7 thousand are in poor condition. 1.1 thousand are in terrible condition, analysts believe. The article notes, as for new production of weapons in the Russian Federation, according to The Economist, 175 modern T-90M tanks have been sent to the front since February the 24th 2022, and the International Institute for Strategic Studies estimates their production in 2024 at up to 90 units. Since the number of the latter is decreasing, the production of the newly created T-90 in 2024 may amount to no more than 28 units. Pavlo Luzin, an expert on Russian military potential at the Washington-based Center for European Policy Analysis, believes that Russia can realistically produce only 30 tanks per year. In 2023, when the Ukrainians captured an allegedly new Russian T-90M tank, they discovered that its gun was manufactured in 1992. The Russians also cannibalized the barrels of the old towed artillery and mounted them on self-propelled howitzers. Analyst Richard Verica believes that by the beginning of 2024, five to six thousand such barrels have been removed. 
How long the Russians can continue to do this depends on the condition of the remaining 6,000 units. Michael Gerstad says that with rocket-propelled volley systems like the TOS-1A Salt Sepek barrel depletion means much shorter volleys. Luzin believes that at the current rate of elimination, stocks of Russian tanks and infantry vehicles will reach a critical point of depletion by the second half of 2026. This is evidenced by data from the analysis of satellite images of storage bases. From that time, both sides will probably reach conditional parity in this regard and will rely primarily on the achievements of the last few years, drones and other innovative systems. North Korean troops are likely to suffer heavy losses in Ukraine, potentially exceeding those of Russia. Estonian Colonel Ants Kiviselg, head of the Estonian Defense Forces Intelligence Center, told the Estonian public broadcaster ERR. The first North Korean soldiers were deployed to Russia's Kursk Oblast in late October, Ukraine's military intelligence reported earlier. North Korea has sent nearly 12,000 troops to Russia, including 500 officers and three generals, according to HUR. The North Korean soldiers are usually trained to fight in mountainous terrain, which means they are not familiar with Ukrainian territory, its climate and geography, Kiviselg said. The training does not include combat operations in such conditions, and the training they receive in the Russian Federation is certainly not of a very high level, Kiviselg said. Therefore, we can expect North Korean units to suffer heavy losses in Ukraine and probably even more than the Russian Federation's forces have suffered so far. He said that the North Korean troops arrived in Kursk Oblast in early October, having previously undergone two to four weeks of training. Following this, North Korean soldiers redeployed to the Ukrainian front, Kiviselg added. The arrival of North Korean soldiers on the Ukrainian front will likely take place in stages, Kiviselg said. In this additional deployment of North Korean units in Russia, their training and then arrival on the Ukrainian front continues in the long term. It could certainly bring some changes to the front line. Some 8,000 North Korean troops have been deployed to Russia's Kursk Oblast to participate in the war against Ukraine, according to U.S. intelligence. According to the Financial Times, Ukrainian intelligence officials are skeptical regarding the combat effectiveness of the North Korean troops, citing communication issues with their Russian counterparts as the main hurdle Moscow and Pyongyang will have to bridge. North Korea's entry into the war comes when Russia's long and grinding campaign in Ukraine's eastern Donetsk Oblast has dramatically gained pace in recent days. Analysts say Russian forces are advancing at a pace not seen since the early months of the war. North Korea will back Russia until it receives victory in the Ukraine war. Foreign Minister Cho Sun Hui said on Friday at talks in Moscow with Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov. Our traditional historically friendly relations, which have traveled the tested path of history, today are rising to a new level of relations of invincible military comradeship, she told Lavrov, praising Vladimir Putin's wise leadership in the war.